How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. No, it's not a replay. I'm back. It is December 23rd here on this program. And man, I'm lucky to be here today. Holy smokes. This morning, SeaTac Airport, every single solitary flight was canceled. Until noon. And I think it's opened up again because it's noon right now. But I'm not sure what's open and what's not. But we had a bunch of family members who were supposed to fly in. They ain't flying in. And uh, we barely, barely made it back in time. It is colder than I don't even know what around here. And it's cold all over the country. But believe it or not, in uh, just a few short hours, it is actually going to be warmer here than it is going to be in Orlando, Florida on Christmas Eve. Yes, it is going to be freezing in Orlando on Christmas Eve. And here in Seattle, it's going to be 50. And if you think I am lamenting the lack of a white Christmas, think again. I could not be happier to have 50-degree weather coming to Seattle here over the next 24 to 48 hours because it's cold and it's miserable. We just survived an ice storm, although Vinny did not. If you listen to the Brian and Vinny show last night, halfway through the show, his power went out and he never came back. So I had to finish that show solo. But if you are, uh, if you are suffering through this horrible deep freeze, my heart goes out to you because it sucks. And uh, hopefully soon everything's going to warm up again. But anyway, I'm back, so I got a lot to talk about. With the exception of Rampage, it's like I never left. I've seen Raw, SmackDown, AEW, my favorite show, NXT, caught up on all the news. I got a lot to talk about here today. Mike Sempervivi joins us after the break with more Wrestling Observer Live. It's a big motherfucker. Oh, of a trip. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, we're back. Well, I'm back. I think Mike's been here most of the time. I think he got a day off or something like that in the middle, if sort I recall of. correctly. Sort of, yeah. Jim did a solo show on Wednesday, wrapping up everything that took place on NXT. So, Well, if you think I didn't watch NXT, think again. I've seen it all! And I've already got the chat here uh, sending in all these, what'd you think about this? What'd you think about that? What'd you think about this? What'd you think about that? Well, why don't we do this? I got news today. But then, if you want to know what I thought about something, and you haven't heard about it yet, send a text to 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. And then we'll go through some of those, because it's a Friday. We've got nothing to do today. But I do have one thing that I want to that I want to mention here. I know one, one of everyone's favorite topics is the ratings. Oh, you guys talk too much about the ratings. Well, I just want to mention three ratings here very briefly. Three! Okay? Even though these have gone over, there's a point to this. Wednesday's AEW Holiday Bash Show did 957,000 viewers, the highest audience for the show since October 26th. It did a .30 rating. Second highest rating in that category since November 23rd. All right? That's that's dynamite. 957,000.30. NXT this week. 705,000 viewers. The largest audience total for the show since October 25. A .14, which is the second best number since November 15th. And then we had Raw on Monday, and of course we had some record low numbers for Raw. And Raw this week did 1.705 million viewers, up 16% from last week. Best audience for the show since October 17th. It did a .43, which was up 17% from last week. And it beat everything on cable not related to the NFL. That's the last, that's Monday Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the ratings for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, we've had some low numbers of late. 
some very low numbers. And of course, whenever there's a low number, you know, everyone freaks out and everything like that. And uh, and now, you know, it looked like uh, all of the shows were suffering. And uh, here we are, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, with three very good numbers. And uh, what ended this weekend was the World Cup. Now, I'm not saying 100% that one thing had anything to do with the other, but uh, it was I think it was on Monday after the Raw rating came out, or Tuesday. Some people noted that, uh, you know, maybe part of the issue with these wrestling ratings was not even so much, you know, everyone, if, if, if Dynamite does a number, everybody looks at what else was on TV that night, which you should do, obviously. But they said, you know, a lot of people are super into the World Cup, and it may not even be like a head-to-head viewership issue, but more, maybe people are watching so much of the World Cup that they don't want to watch anything else on television, or they're going to chop things out of television that they would normally watch. And I heard that, and now we've had three straight shows with good numbers, and I guess we'll find out how uh, SmackDown and, and Rampage do tonight. But it very well may be that now that the World Cup is over, people are getting back into their normal television viewing schedule, and they're not sitting there watching hours of World Cup on the DVR or whatever, and they're ready to get back into watching wrestling again. It appears to be a trend with three straight nights of good numbers, but I guess we'll find out. But Raw, NXT, and Dynamite all doing better this week and better than they've been doing for weeks now, in fact. Well, when it comes to the NXT number, I know, you know, part of that or a good deal of that was the fact that the over 50s were way up again. And I'm not sure if that was the case with AEW or Raw. I didn't look at the the breakdown of ratings or anything like that, but I assume it's probably the same thing. And I think the World Cup has a little bit to do with it and just the time of year. You know, people are working extra because they need the money just to go ahead and pay bills, let alone go ahead and pay for holiday gifts and things like that. You have a lot of things going on, and look, the pool is smaller now than it ever has been as far as being able, you know, wrestling fans watching via television. That is absolutely the case. So, you know, those swoons that you get because of events like the World Cup or the NFL or things like that, they're really going to really stand out. Now, like every year, the NFL is coming to an end, and January is a great time for wrestling to kick back off again. And AEW's got things loaded up. WWE every year has the Royal Rumble, which leads into WrestleMania, and that's usually the most exciting time of the year. So, you know, it's one of those things where there's always over-analysis of the ratings, especially in the moment. You know, it's something that we've talked about on this show. It is better to pull back and really look, you know, at a at a – a lot of time but you know there are people that just because dave covers it and because those numbers make it out there week after week there is a you know heavy analyzation of these numbers that oftentimes is you know inaccurate (laughs) in how people are are going about dealing with it latest edition of the observer newsletter dave Meltzer gave an update on john cena's status for wrestlemania 39 Noted the belief is Cena will be working at WrestleMania 39. He's working on his schedule to make sure that he can, but the belief is that he will get it done. The belief is that Cena will be working at WrestleMania, but what we are told is that he's working on his schedule to make sure it works, but the belief is he will get it done. He'll be unavailable to WWE through most of February, March, due to filming a movie outside the U.S. At one point, he was talked about for a match with Austin Theory at Mania, but that was with Vince McMahon in charge. And then he uh, talks more about a bunch of other, bunch of other stuff right here, and uh, I got more I'm going to say here in a little while, but uh, let's just say that it's looking like he's likely going to be at at WrestleMania this year, so we can all look forward to that. I think it was mentioned yesterday the WWE show in India is going to be postponed. They were going to run a major show on January 18th. The event would have taken place two years after the Superstar Spectacle, a show filmed at the Thunderdome, but produced for the Indian market. It aired on January 26th on India's Republic Day. Dave Meltzer reported Friday's Observer. 2023 show has been postponed. Sony 6 is merging with Z and decided maybe maybe Z is related to G, who is the, uh, she's the... Hot secretary on NXT decided to put the live event 
off until after the merger had been completed. I think it was just because they all saw all this weather nonsense and decided we ain't going anywhere for a while. But one way or the other, there will be no India show on January 18, 2023. Well, at least we'll get into share and the creeds now. Well, I mean, we are going to get them at some point. As soon as old Veer's finger feels better. I have a feeling that his finger is probably feeling a lot better now. You know, I don't like to make fun of our own website. but uh, And I certainly don't want to make fun of whoever wrote the article. But we did have an article on the front page. I, I actually got to find the headline because it made me laugh. Can I do that real quick before the break? Sure. All right. Where is it here? Okay. Here's, here's Ian Carey. I have great respect for Ian Carey. But the headline here is, Rick Ross teases future AW appearances, explains Keith Lee observation. Bro, how much explanation do we need? He looked at the guy, and he thought he was a big mother. That's what happened. I believe he reiterated that as I well, I guess too, the, the yeah, he is his exact words. I got up close on Keith Lee, realized how big his traps were. Me up close to him, he looks like he weighs between 360 and 370. And that's saying something because So he called Ross, him a big mother. He is a big mother. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, more after the break. We're going to go through some of these topics you guys want to talk about. 425-780-7566. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So uh, I was talking about that John Cena story. Uh, they, Dave Rohde's going to be looking to try to make it to WrestleMania this year. And I couldn't help but remember something people have been talking about, which was a tweet by Rob Fee. You guys know who that is? That is the guy that was hired as the WWE Director of Long-Term Creative. And uh, I would like to preface this by saying that I don't know what all he's doing, but I do think that the storytelling has been much better in WWE of late. I mean, there's stuff that, I mean, don't get me wrong, as I'll get to in a moment. This uh, this Miz Loomis ladder match sucked. Yeah, I went back and watched it, and I'm so sick of this story. But you know what? It's a story with this, so far it's had like a beginning, middle, and an end, which we never had with Vince. And all of these stories are having beginnings and middles and, and endings. So. You know, thumbs up to the guy for that. However, he tweeted the other day, Man, I still can't believe I work at WWE. Never had so much fun. The talent top to bottom in the company is second to none. Plus, there is nothing better than seeing how wrong the dirt sheets are all the time. And he put a, a crying smile. Now listen, okay? You know this guy reminds me of? Edris Anofe. He's He's... Working the marks is what he's doing here. He's trolling you guys. That's what's happening here. But with that said, I'm going to play along a little bit. I'm going to ask old Rob Fee. You better not be talking about me, brother. You better not be talking about me. Who's the guy, speaking of John Cena, who first reported that John Cena was not going to be at WrestleMania this year because he was filming a movie in Vancouver? Huh? Who was it? Me. Ah. Who was the first guy... The reported that Becky Lynch separated her shoulder. Huh? Who? Me. That's who it was. Who was the first guy who said, you know what would be a horrible idea? Dexter Lumis and the Miz in a ladder match. Oh, was I wrong about that one too? Nope, I was right. So, I want you guys to find one, one example of where I reported news about WWE over the last year and I was wrong. I'm going to wait here during the show. All right? Do you really believe that you're giving people ample time to go back through of course. shows? It should be obvious. According to Rob Fee here. You do like two shows a day. How many Who's shows the guy who reported done? that Regal was on his way back to WWE? Huh? Me. And here he goes. Well. <laughs> Rob better not try and go troll to troll with me. Uh, well, That'd be a bad true. idea, brother. You are a king of trolls. That is absolutely the case. That's right. That's right. Well, are there people that still actually believe uh, Edris has got that chest tattoo? A lot of them. Well. And hey, you know what? You never know. But as I mentioned on the Brian and Vinny show last night, the NXT show this week was a taped show. 
NXT show next week is a taped show. NXT is going to return live the first week of January, I believe. And uh, y'all get back to me when Edris Sanofi shows up with a WWE logo tattooed on his chest. Yeah, the stencil on Bro, have you guys there. seen Edris Sanofi? You think that guy's going to tattoo anything on that chest? Come on. He may tattoo something get on that chest, here. but I don't think he's foolish enough to tattoo a big WWE logo on his chest. But you know what? Look, if he got the other peck done and he figured he'd have some fun and did a stencil or gets a temporary tattoo, if it works in this day and age, if you're able to do something online that will put your yourself out there without embarrassing the company, in fact, if anything, it would be embarrassing himself. That's what a lot of people who have taken this and ran with it are saying. Oh, my God, what happens if he quits? What an idiot. What a mark. What a... You know, hey. but he's using that to his advantage. So he's playing the fool in this to get attention for himself. And that's, look, it doesn't hurt. This isn't going to hurt anybody. So it works for me, and it's fine. Guys, I love you all in the chat. I've missed you a lot. I even went in on the airplane yesterday, and I went into that chat for about a half hour. That's how much I missed everybody. But, bros, I'm joking about him not getting a tattoo on his chest. That's not why I'm saying he didn't get a tattoo. I'm saying he didn't get a real WWE tattoo because I don't think he got a real tattoo. Well, it's like and if you're asking why, here. the answer is all people have been talking about for a week is Edra Sanofe. That's it, DJ. Because he got a I'm, fake I'm, tattoo of the uh, WWE logo on his uh, chest. And that's the thing. And I know, look, and DJ is like, what's what would be the punchline? And... You're right. I can see for, look, I'm not saying There's that. There's no punchline. He's getting attention for well, himself. That's the, that's the whole thing. I don't think it's a highly intelligent way to, to go about doing things, but I'm also an old man who doesn't know how to manipulate social media, and obviously it's working for him. And, and again, he's gotten a bunch of attention for it. Does this help the team? Maybe it does. You know, this is a way where he's putting himself out there. He's garnering attention. It's not hurting the company at all. So he may get a little bit of a reward for this. I mean, they're about to be. They probably should be pushed in NXT as a tag team harder anyway. You know, you went through the thing about the, the sweaters getting torn up and all that sort of stuff. They've got a lot more experience under their belt now. Go ahead and let's actually give them an extended run here. Maybe, look, if Briggs and Jensen can get one for so long, I mean, I think it's time for these two maybe to actually be locked into a real feud with another team. I don't know. Pretty Deadly would be a good one. This person says, Brian, what are your thoughts on Uncle Howdy and his laughter? Well, SmackDown was the first show that I watched when I was at Disney. And I took my iPad and I walked down to the... You know where you check in the lobby? And I pulled up a big, comfortable chair, and I sat back with that free Disney Wi-Fi, and I started watching SmackDown. Ain't nothing free at Disney. And I knew. Actually, the Wi-Fi was it actually was free. It was the Sorry. only free thing there. How much was the room, though? <laughs> just tack it in there. I don't look at prices, Mike. No, oh, that's I'm right. I'm rich. I Amex black guy here. But anyway, so I... Uh, so I sat down, I started watching the show, and I knew, I knew that uh, that Uncle Howdy showed up, because I hear about these things before I watch them. So I'm just waiting. And I thought it was going to be like the main event angle. I thought it was going to be the end of the show. And then, like 40 minutes into the show, out comes old L.A. Knight. And L.A. Knight, you know, he's another one of those guys who decided this week, well, I'm going to be Ric Flair in 1998. I'm just going to be just crazy Flair. And he does his total crazy Flair ripoff, which is saying something from a guy who rips off The Rock and Steve Austin. Now he's ripped off Ric Flair on top of that. So he's doing a total crazy Flair promo. Out comes Bray Wyatt. And then, you know, Bray Wyatt gets punched or whatever, and he sits in the ring. And then the Uncle Howdy appears on the big screen. And, uh, and then it goes away. And I thought, well, that can't possibly be what, what's going on here because, you know, how does that prove it's two different guys? So then, you know, the spooky music starts to play again. And then out comes Uncle Howdy. All right? Now, if you think that guy laughed, let me tell you something. Bro, I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And I rewound and I watched, I watched that numbskull come out again. And I laughed and he laughed. And these blokes at Disney are looking over going, who is this guy? And what's so funny on his iPad? Man, I was just dying. 
This is the stupidest, just the geekiest. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I mean, listen, that's another one. Rob Fee. I'm the one that told you guys that Uncle Howdy was a different guy. I think it's Bo Dallas. Everyone's like, oh, it's going to be Alexa. What? What? Alexa's going to be Uncle Howdy? Ooh. And they were like, I think it's Alexa because Uncle Howdy had small hands. I was like, man, I hope <laughs> Odell's don't hear that one. God. Man, he's going to be upset. Oh, my God. But anyway. People said this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then I watched that and, you know. Hey, His listen. These are so dainty. Listen, it's got to be Alexa. Here's the thing, guys. Uncle Howdy didn't do any magic. If this were real... Obviously, Uncle Howdy's a different guy. He's probably Bo Dallas. He's the brother of Bray Wyatt. He's dressed as Uncle Howdy. These two idiots are in cahoots. Why? I don't know. That I can't answer. But this is not magic. There's just another guy playing Uncle Howdy. So I laughed and laughed and laughed. Then. Then. And I don't know why I did this except I'm a glutton. And I just want to make sure I know what's going on. I watched Raw. They did that sit-down interview with Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair. And this was the damn stupidest thing I have ever seen in my lifetime. When Alexa Bliss had to, with a straight face, explain what happened with her and The Fiend. And she goes, like, totally straight face. She goes, well, you know, Bianca, The Fiend abducted me. Total straight face. The Fiend abducted me and then he altered my personality to bring out the worst of who i was total straight face and then she goes then he left me high and dry and left me with these deep abandonment issues i was like wait a second he abducted you he abducted you and then he let you go and now you're abandoned like, I know there's probably some term for that, but like, what? And then she's just never been the same. And Bianca's, poor Bianca has to look at her and, and like act opposite this preposterous character. And then finally, you know, after all this time, after months of tease and everything like that, Alexa just stands up and she breaks a vase over Bianca's head. That's her heel turn. I was like, oh my God. Like, I am so mad at myself for watching Raw, but I'm so glad I did to just see this. Ka! Am I wrong? No. Did anybody like this? No. More after the break. Observer Live. I do like the guy on the uh, chat here talking about uh, how this feuding with The Fiend is uh, never good for anybody. And this guy goes, I hope it doesn't destroy L.A. Knight's career. What? <laughs> well, what career? That's... With all due respect, bro, this guy's been on the main roster for like three months. And the first two and a half months, he was the guy in charge of maximum male models. <laughs> like, he's miles beyond where he was then. And even if he gets destroyed, like, he's still going to be better off than he when he was Max Dupree. Do you guys forget that? That's true. Yes. What yes. happened to Marseille and Mansois? Well, I don't know. But they may as well be feuding with the Fiend. Because they ain't nowhere to be seen right now. And then uh, this person here says, Sheeta Hater. Was it a great match or the greatest women's match to happen on TV in the U.S.? I'm not going to do that comparison. You know how many really? matches I've seen? I did the math the other day. My lifetime. And it was a lot. But uh, it was awesome. It was an awesome match. They both were great. The crowd was fantastic all night. Aside from uh, whatever that Keith Lee segment was, where he once again, once again, there's another one. Not WWE, but I told you guys. What a geek. Poor Keith Lee. They have not figured out that they are making him such a geek. This guy just wandered into an ambush. That's what he did. He just no. wandered into an ambush. Well, he found Rick Rose was on his side. No. Apparently not. I think that I you could look. Is Swerve Strickland a geek? I mean No. Well, hold on. He's now. been working Keith Lee for weeks now. Yeah, but here's the thing. So his new crew 
is one of the guys who was in the Trust Busters and a minor league baseball player. Yeah. Who just happened to appear stitches on steroids. I and I'm not what? saying he's on steroids, but the rapper say, Stitches. What are you saying here? The rapper Stitches was the first thing, or not the whatever Stitches was. That's the just first say thing knuckleball I saw Schwartz. Not in the knuckleball Schwartz, but look, I I'm surprised. And with Parker Boudreaux, obviously there was always something with him because WWE signed him. He had an incredible look. You know, he was kind of blessed by Paul Heyman there for a little bit as far as the possibility to be the next big, big thing. And it didn't work out. You know, he just was not coming along, I guess, in, in NXT. And they ended up releasing him. But very quickly, they picked him up for AEW, like very quickly. So there's obviously something to this guy where they think they can make something out of him. But he's been there a bit now. I don't think he's uh, I, I haven't checked his dark and an elevation record or anything like that but i am surprised of a lot of people they could have chosen on that roster who probably could have used the rub with swerve strickland and vice versa i'm surprised they're going in this direction and brandon goatsman i mean i don't you know i don't know anything about him other than he's relatively inexperienced but he's been training i think he was jay lethal was the one who, who's getting him in but they just seem like a group that's better off for like ROH and getting experience and doing things there as opposed to being on AEW. But I could be dead wrong about this. It seems like a gamble and a risk. And right now with Swerve and, and Lee, it's like, I don't know. I've, I was hoping for a little bit more out of this, but this is what we got so far. We'll see what happens. Well, that segment was a disaster. But the rest of the show, I thought it was an excellent show. Great main event. Thought they did a very good follow up with uh, actually a lot of different guys. And uh, yeah, good dynamite. And Starks and Andretti. I mean, that's the biggest thing was right off the bat with Jericho. I mean, that was, and I talked about it yesterday, that was a really. That was a really great way to go about things, uh, you know, with Starks being able to cut Jericho down. Jericho Starks is a feud that is good. You know, Starks going over would be even better because Jericho doesn't lose anything and Starks maintains his, his role towards the top of that roster. So I think it worked out really well when it comes to Andretti. As an old wrestling fan, again, I talked about it yesterday. There's been plenty of times Ric Flair, and again, this is not solo to Ric Flair. They've done this in pro wrestling for years, but one of the things that would happen after he would take that L is he would be just so so irrational, so angry, so bitter over some somebody that was beneath him. How dare they actually beat me? That he would go and attack them, rub their face into the ground, really do some damage to that person. And they did that exactly with Andretti. Jericho throwing the fireball, then wiping his face on the concrete. So one thing I will throw at you and throw out there again at Chris Jericho and AEW. I understand completely why he was using Judas as a heel. No doubt. And I don't think it affected anything with him doing that. But I think when you throw a fireball in somebody's face, when you're wiping their face across the ground, I'm thinking at this point, I really want to be the biggest heel I can be. And I think it's time for another, I'm not saying another reimagining of Jericho's entire character, but I think he should probably reimagine the theme music that he uses. He, as popular as it is, as great and as fun as it is to sing along, Go ahead and actually change that a little bit so when you come out, people do actually hate you. And people do want to see you get your real comeuppance instead of the yay boo thing. Because to me, it loses some of the impact from a pro wrestling show point of view. If you're really not following up on the fact that you were that big of a bastard that you actually burned somebody and should be, in theory, in real life, if this was, you know, we were playing parallels heel here in jail or, 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 or being fired by the company or being suspended by the company. So I want to see how they follow up and continue to follow up. But, I mean, really, last week or on Wednesday, I thought it was great. 425-780-7566. If you want to text some topics right here. A lot we can get into on the show. Person wants to know if you think we'll see Rick Ross back after what happened there. Yes. Yeah, it's just one faux pas. We've all done it, right? 
He can pay for it. Just yeah, don't put him in the thing. ring with big guys. No, just put, <laughs> put him in the ring with little guys, and we won't have no, this problem. don't do that. Look, then you're really showing off how small some, some of these guys can be. Well, it's just no, we're putting over put, how big he is. Well, maybe it's, He's it's a big time. big guy. Here's the deal. Maybe it's time you put the show on a five- or a seven-second delay. And I know you're not going to be able to catch everything and all that, but they've already been, they've already been talked about with this. They are given, like, you know, if I'm not mistaken, MJF uh, said the S word during his promo that took place before this. So they're uh, allowed a, an, a, a certain amount. For the rest of the show, then, so when Jeff Jarrett is saying mf -er into the crowd or when, <laughs> you know, Rick Ross is calling Keith Lee a big mf -er, you know, you take away some of that risk by having that little delay that nobody at home really knows that you have until somebody goes ahead and screws up. Well, I believe they have a delay because I've heard it used before. But uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, everybody has I the think, ability to do it. I but... think that delay guy was just, he didn't even notice. I think he was asleep. <laughs> I don't know how you or he was like, that. man, he's right. Look at the size <laughs> well, of that guy. Think, well, that that is true, and that's the one thing is everybody can look around and go, well, he wasn't lying about that. And let's be honest here, too. Rick Ross, if he went out there every week and said a line of obscenities until they pulled him off the air, he's got more than enough money to pay any FCC fine or anything that happens to Tony. All righty. What else have we got here in the old text message bin? Maybe I should have opened up those phone lines. Do you think Braun is dropping the title to Waller and showing up at the Royal Rumble to go to the main roster? Well, as we have learned, you can still show up in the main roster as uh, the champion because the New Day are the NXT Tag Team champion. So you don't have to take the title off of him to uh, send him up to the main roster. I'm not sure if Grayson Waller... Listen, I like Grayson Waller. I think he's a great heel. But I'm not sure that if I'm sending Braun up to the main roster, I'm having Grayson Waller as NXT champion right now. Although, who else do you use? I don't know. But, uh... Well, so many of those guys I'd like to see up on the main roster. It's like, man, you could go back to Carmelo because he's so entertaining. But, I mean, he's, he's done everything. It should be full stop at Pretty Deadly. Although, yeah, Carmelo, it, yes, he should be on the main for roster. For the main roster? But Pretty Deadly. Dude, I watched that, uh... I watched that show... And it was the Virgin and his buddy against the New Day on Wednesday. And, like, there was nothing wrong with the match. It was fine. But, man, it was night and day from the New Day against Pretty Deadly. The New Day Pretty Deadly was, like, a legitimate great tag team match. And the New Day, who are a legitimately awesome tag team, they got in there with the Virgin and his buddy, and they got a... Uh, like a fine match at best out of them. I mean, the difference in in talent between those teams is and nothing against the guys or anything like that, but pretty deadly should be out of there. Carmelo Hayes should be out of there. I'm sure if I went through the entire uh, roster, there's some other guys that should be out of there. Well, I mean, Braun Breaker, you could argue. Braun can could be, be out, out of there. there. He could I mean, stay a little longer, but he well, needs to get look, out of there at some point. Grayson Waller could, too. I think the question is going to be, you know, Grayson Waller, how long do you wait for him to improve in the ring? He can do a lot of athletic stuff. He's already got a personality and a rap where he could be up there. You know, he absolutely could. You know, there's a lot of people with experience. Wes Lee at this point, I mean, honestly, he could go up. I don't know if it benefits him to go up, but he absolutely could go up as well, too. So in this share, that's another one. They could use the experience. But with how things are right now, they could probably go up, too, and have an impact. The problem is... Are they going to be better off than, say, the Viking Raiders or plenty of other teams that unfortunately are up there right now and just spinning wheels? The tag team division on SmackDown. Pretty deadly would be far better than the Viking Raiders. At, I, I Unfortunately, at this point, I, I agree with you. And I say, unfortunately, just because the Viking Raiders, you know what they can do. But look at where they're at right now. That triangle... I mean, I feel so bad for Legato because those two guys I did want to see on the main roster, and they're just dying right now with this triangle with the Viking Raiders and Hit Row. And it's like, look, put all three people, put B-Fab and put all the women in there to have their do whatever it is that you're going to do and get it over with because it's awful, absolutely awful. Says, What's the plan for FTR? I don't know. They're losing the tag titles. I guess we'll find think. out. I mean, 
All I know is they did an interview about how uh, they may be leaving this spring, and all of a sudden they started losing belts. And that may have been the plan all along, because Tony does what he does based on what he planned. But, uh, I mean, if they worked for me and they were talking about how we may be out of here in the spring, I'd be taking belts off them, too. Yeah, but none of the belts, none of those belts have anything to do with the exception of the Ring of Honor titles, which falls into line with you lose one finally to the Briscoes after beating them twice, which I guess only once in ROH. So that's that's all that matters there, I guess. Or it, was it twice? I can't remember now. But regardless, you're starting up your TV, or at least you thought you were. You're going to put it on Honor Club. Perfect. That's no problem there. The New Japan IWGP Tag Team titles, Tony doesn't really have anything to do with that, and it's looking like it's time to take those off of them as well, too, whether it be Bishamon or, or Aussie Open or, you know, whoever it ultimately ends up being. I can see them losing, if not on January 4th, very soon after that. And the same thing with the AAA Tag Team titles, and I don't believe that that is necessarily a sign that they're going to be leaving the company either, because as this is going on, they're getting more depressed, they're getting sad. Cash is saying, oh man, that one was my fault. They just lost to the guns. So if they kind of bottom out and then it's time for them to go after those AEW tag titles, I mean, that's a, a simple story that you can tell. Or there is the possibility that if they are going to be out of there in April, May, June, whenever the contract is said to be up, you know, it is actually now time to start dropping those titles and, and get to the first three months of the year and, and, and let that be that. Will Sami Zayn get killed by Roman in the bloodline December 30th the show? Sami gets pinned in the tag match. Way too early. Way too early. But something could happen to lead to that because they're doing a slow build, and this needs to go through at least April. So I would not have him turn on him yet. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, it's December 23rd. You know what that means? What's that? That means tomorrow... At 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, the Christmas show will be unleashed to the world. WrestlingObserver.com for the audio. Video.f4wonline.com for video subscribers. So if you've not signed up for either place, brother, you better get going. In fact, if you sign up for uh, WrestlingObserver.com for the audio, you can get every Christmas show we've ever done. Dating back to uh, 2005. We've done a Christmas show every single year since 2005. And, uh, yeah, they're all available. So uh, we did things a little differently this year. So be ready. If you're wondering, this person goes, why is Jim Valley not on the Christmas show? A lot of people not on the Christmas show. Because things are a little bit different. We'll see how it goes. But I do think that you're still going to have a good time listening. So, uh, yes, we drank. I was going to say, were you, are you trying to minimize your 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 one day of alcoholism? No, or? we drink a lot oh, on no. this show. But that'll be out tomorrow, December 24th, at uh, 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, so you can get excited for that. And uh, that is it, everybody. We are going to uh, wrap it up here for today. I'll be back this weekend with Dave, and uh, I'll be back this weekend, or this next week as well, with the exception of... Uh, we are, in fact, going on another trip, but I'm only going on one trip a year with no equipment, so I'm bringing everything. So I'll be here for Observer Live, the Brian and Vinny show. Uh, not sure about Tom and Lance. Tom is in Japan, and Lance, I think, is, uh, I forget what he's doing. And then uh, I think Jim Valley is going to do one more Observer Radio. But one way or the other, I'll be around. I'll be around for this end of the year shenanigans on a mountain this time. On a snowy mountain. Into That's going to be exciting. Not quite that bad. But anyway, have a great holiday, everybody. Thanks for listening. Mike, as always, callers and listeners up in the studio. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.